we're following about eight people. Um, uh, we followed the those. I mean, the three main characters end up being um, Ahmed and Khalid and uh, and uh, Magdi. Um, but we followed um, Raji Omran, who you see, who you will hopefully meet very soon. But she is running late yeah. on Egyptian time. <laughs> We also followed um, Ida, uh, who is the girl with the glasses. She gets very frustrated with the square at a certain point, and we really wanted the whole film to sort of center around the square and this idea of a use of space to change things because that's really the, the zeitgeist of what's happening around the world at this time. And we didn't want it to only be about Egypt, but about this movement of young people using physical space to try to change something. Um, we also followed Buthaina Kamel, who's the woman who stands up and says, Egypt's don't, e Egyptians don't revolt easily. She was one of the women that I followed in 2006, and she actually ran for president at a certain point in the film when, when the presidential elections happened. So she was very much outside of the square at a certain point, and she's a whole another film. Um, and a young girl named Dina, who was a student, and she disappeared for about seven months in the middle of shooting and her phone number changed and we thought she had been arrested, but she turned up later. So there's a lot, yeah, there was a lot of stories that didn't um, make it in. And th there could be a square too. I mean, right now we're really trying to get this out as widely as possible and we're trying to release it in Egypt, which is its o has its own huge challenges because it's a very divided and very dark time in Egypt right now. Um, you know, people have been arrested. We ignored curfew all the time. It's a very, very, very difficult time right now. Um, we, the first time we allowed the film to end really was going to Sundance. And we thought we had followed the political continuum. So the bringing down of a dictator to the election of a president. Um, but as we were on the way to Sundance, literally 10 days before we went, all of the people that we had followed were back in the streets, basically saying, we will not allow for Morsi to be using the tools of democracy to create another dictatorship. And it became a much more interesting and deeper story because it became about holding government accountable and fighting against fascism, whether the face of that fascism was Mubarak or the military or the Muslim Brotherhood. So we felt that, that they had gone through a cycle and that we had followed their emotional arc. The editing, I mean, I just have to say, I just have to say that this was such an incredible collaboration of hugely talented people. So, you know, it takes a village or a square or whatever to make a film like this. We started with an Egyptian edit. I mean, I'll, then I'll get to your question really quickly. We started with an Egyptian editor. It was very important for us to start this process of making the film and we bought, got an office two minutes away from the square. It was a very collaborative process, probably too collaborative and democratic <laughs> in the beginning because we had a lot of people, you know, things were exploding down the street. Every decision, editing decision we made was making or breaking the story of the revolution. So it was a lot of pressure <laughs> on an editor and director. And, um, and so, but it was an incredible process because so many people learned in the, in the process. I mean, most of the crew never, on this film has never made a film before. The, you know, a couple revolutionary kids, basically protesters learned how to take sound and they became the sound guys. You know, that's how this whole thing came together. We all met in the square. Um, and then uh, ultimately we ended up finishing the film in Los Angeles with the expertise of Pedro Cos, who if you know his work is an absolutely brilliant editor. In terms of the footage, there were, as you saw, probably four of us really following the story, and you have some additional camera work by people that shot for two or three days um, at different times. And in terms of taking footage, it was a very, um, you know, it was the, f the first time I've made a film where you're not only shooting for a film, you're also shooting because anything that you could be filming could be used as evidence. And we gave our footage to Mossudin, we gave our footage to television stations. It wasn't the kind of thing like a normal film where you, you know, save it for this piece that you're going to come out with in two years, because it was too urgent for that. Yeah, so could I expand on uh, Khalid uh, Abdallah's role and his citizen journalism and what he created? 
basically, and what he continues to do today. When the square was cleared for the first time and Rami was brutally tortured, um, he, Rami escaped from the, it was in the Egyptian Museum, he escaped. Ida went to the, his friend's house that he went to and filmed it and uploaded it. And it was the only images of what had happened. And it was the first time I actually felt like I was making an important film as well because it was not covered anywhere. And here we have our special guest, <laughs> Raji Amran. By the way, Raja gets like 300 <laughs> and p of people out of prison per day, so there's no, no, there's a reason why she's forgetting this. But you tweeted my picture and one of your lawyers. That's how. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I forgot, forgot that far. Yes, yes, we did. One of thousands <laughs> that she's rescued. Yeah, so. I mean that's the thing in Egypt. Uh, social media, especially Twitter, has become very, very um, important. You know, during the revolution and. and times of arrest because that's how people get the word out and it really helps you know because everyone anyone who's on twitter can like try to find the person look for them contact their family so it's it's a very useful method of like connecting between people i mean i, I can say very simply that what people are fighting for in egypt is also much more basic i think i mean yeah. we're talking about no you know torture in prisons we're talking about random arrests and i mean you can you should speak more to... Yeah, to I mean, I think, you you know, historically also, uh, Egyptians have been, you know, a passive kind of people. I mean, we stayed under the Mubarak regime for 30 years, and I was, you know, I was one of the people that from 2005 went down to the streets to protest, and we would be like 50, 100 people max, and we'd have 2,000, like, uh, you know, central security forces, like, securing the area where we were, so... Um, January 25th was a huge, huge, you know, like, uh, surprise for everybody because nobody expected all the numbers to go out. And people are still going out, you know. They went down on June 30th, um, and they're still continuing to protest. And I think we will continue to see protests for a very long time in Egypt because, like you said, the revolution is a process. It's nowhere near ended at all. It's an ongoing thing. And I think this is the main, like, achievement that every single Egy Egyptian feels that they've they have accomplished in the last three years is the right to protest you would go down to a protest before j uh, january 25th and you know you're probably going to get you know either arrested harassed something's going to happen to you so it was extremely dangerous to to exercise that right that's the basic right that everyone feels this is the one thing the revolution has achieved so far I'll never forget, it's not in the film right now, but it was in the film at one point, when I was filming, Raja was being interviewed by CNN, and he w she was saying, you know, well, now protesting has been banned, and which was sort of a crazy thing, because that's how Mubarak was removed, and then all of a sudden, an army yeah. comes in and protest was banned, and Raja says to CNN, well, we have to protest this <laughs> law, and CNN, w uh, um, the CNN guy was like, but protests are banned and she's like yes we have to protest the law we have to test this and it was the first time I was kind of like this this is all a, this is about testing and pushing and pushing against everything right yeah. now the criminal procedures or law hasn't changed at all and that's the law that's used to you know arrest people um, we also have a very <laughs> old law from uh, 1910 when the English were occupying Egypt which is the law that's uh, used to break up its its uh, its anti-congregation law that's what it's called and that's the law that's still being used today what we use other than the law is really pressure you know I'm, I'm a human rights activist I'm part of a network of uh, volunteer lawyers that have been working since before the revolution when the cafe movement started and basically through mobilizing pressure social media getting the media on the cases and really publicizing and you know having having families and activists outside wherever the person is arrested, the police station, at the prosecution while interrogation, that pressure makes a difference. It really, really works. So they know, you know, these people that you arrested, even if they're not famous activists or people that are known, these people matter and we're not going to stop defending them and going after them until you let them out. Basically, you do like person by person by person by family and it's just amazing to watch. And she's winning the RFK award next week. We're very proud of her, which is the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award in Washington. Thank you. Thank you.